battles, swords and that. But, but never to anyone who's not a friend of ours. That's how it's been for as long as I've known her. You don't think it's true what people are saying, do you? Lady Karen, how's business? Not nearly as foul as the weather. You're doing good trade then, both in and out of the hideaway? Hmm, can't complain. Wait, what exactly are you getting at? Not once in five long years do you pay my affairs half a care. But here you are today, raking me over the coals like a bloody popotto. Just asking. Out of interest. <sighs> All right. <sighs> I'm here because I was told that certain rumors have been circulating. Uh, about you selling weapons to brigands. Oh, are you? And who was it who knows me so well as to tell tales of my evil exploits? I... I, I didn't exactly hear firsthand. All I know is that someone in Dalamil has been spreading word to that effect. And what? You believe it? You think I'm profiting off the blood of innocence, do you? Look, I've done things I'm not proud of. Might be there were a time when I turned a blind eye to the wretchedness of the world so I could line my pocket. But that woman is no more. And you'd know that if you'd ever paid the slightest bit of notice. You're right, Lady Karen. I apologize. It was wrong of me to doubt you. No, it was. No. I reckon you've got better things to do than pointing your do-gooding finger at a poor old woman. Of course. Good day. Clive. Thought you knew better than to put stock in If you're gonna buy some, be quick about it. You're rubbing me blind, you know. Is that all? Trouble with your gear, or... What's saying for you, dear? And? I spoke with Lady Karen. What did she say? that the rumors were unfounded, and that I was a fool for thinking they might hold any truth, along with some other things that made her feelings clear. And while it sounds like she may have done things she regretted in her past, she says those days are behind her. Oh, well, that's good. I knew Nan wasn't caught up in out bad. Why would people say she was? What did she ever do to them? It's not right. No, it's not. But people do things for all sorts of reasons. Perhaps we'll never know. Well, I'm going to find out. That trader, he said they were all talking about her in Dalimil. So that's where I'm going. I'll find someone who'll tell me, you'll see. Are you sure that's wise? Whoever's spreading these rumors means Karen ill. Oh, right. Well, that's why you'll be coming with me, isn't it, Clive? <sighs> I suppose it is.
I heard the Emperor was in pain. we should do. I say we should just tell Miss Shirley. You'll get us all striped. I'm telling you, I can fix them. Sid! Out of your studies, I see. And what is that? It's not a set of scales, is it? No. Of course it isn't. Well... Not anymore, it's not. Oh. Then just how long hasn't it been one? We're sorry. But we didn't break them. We dis... dismembered them. Just like Miss Mididol showed us. Miss Mididol? And why would she have you dismembering her creations? Because that's the only way to become a ninja near. Miss Mididol said... The best way I see how something worked is to take it apart and put it back together again. Well then, your work is already half done. Carry on. Uh... About that. The taking apart was easy enough, but... It's the putting back we can't work out. Speak for yourself. The heavy thing goes at the bottom. Then... Then... Um... You three need to learn to take responsibility for your actions. So let's have a look at these parts with fresh eyes, shall we? All right. Everything here was once part of Miss Mididol's scales. Every piece has its own role to play, and each is just as important as the others. If even one of them is missing, the scales won't work. So let's think about what those roles might be. You already know one of the pieces. The body. Its role is to support everything else. But what of the others? This is called the arm. Why do you suppose that is? It doesn't look much like an arm. You're right. It looks more like a wing. <gasps> like a chocobo wing! You've ridden a chocobo before, haven't you, Sid? Will you teach me to ride one one day? I'll think about it. Now, what do arms do? Hold things. So wait, maybe this arm holds things too? Good thinking. You're on the right track. These round parts are called the pans. You all know what a pan is, don't you? I do. Molly uses them in the kitchens. To fry bangers. But these aren't for frying bangers, you idiot. They're for weighing stuff. But what if I wanted to weigh goots? I don't think you'd fit on that little thing. <laughs> Probably not. What are the chains for? Holding the pans up? Well spotted. Which means something must hold the chains up in turn. This tiny piece is what's called a cogwheel. Or gear. Have you ever seen one before? I have. Miss Minidol's dungeon is full of them. Most are on the floor. She puts them in all her inventions. They spin round and round and round and round and... That's right. They're very useful when you want to make things move. Do you remember if there was anything on the scales that moved? I remember the arm moved when I tried weighing an apple. And then somebody ate it. Not my fault. You shouldn't have tried weighing it before lunch. We know what part's supposed to move and how it's supposed to move. So, let's put the pieces together first, see what doesn't move, and then stick the cogwheel to that. Not a bad idea. You see, it's not so difficult. So, now that we've taken stock of the parts and learned what they do, what do you think? I think we've got it. Then here's what we'll do. You tell me what goes where, and I'll put the scales together. Well, obviously you need to start with the body. All the other pieces fit onto it, don't they? And the arms go on the body, just like real arms. 
or wings, if you're a chocobo. And then the arms hold the pants by the chains. Very good. Let's see if that works. Yeah. All finished. Yes! We did it! Well, with Sid's help. <laughs> oh, I just put the pieces together. It was you three engineers who showed me how. That's right. We miss Mididol's hairs. Her hairs? Yeah. Hairs for the future. She's showing us her secrets now, so we can help out the hideaway when we're older. What do you think, Sid? Are we almost ready? With a little more help from Miss Mididol and Miss Shirley. I'd say it won't be long at all. <laughs> you hear that? It won't be long. Until then, though, do try to be honest with Miss Shirley. Hey, look. We never used the cog wheel. You don't think Sid forgot about it, do you? Will there be thunder? Well, did you solve the mystery? It was as you thought. The children had the scales, or the parts of them at least. They dismantled them to see how they worked. Ah, oh, no, Mid will have my head. Thankfully she won't. This might even have been her idea. Although I was the one who ended up teaching the lesson. I'm so sorry, Sid. I know how busy you are. I shall see that the children are properly punished. Please, there's no need. Mid seems to have taken the three of them under her wing. She'd have them follow in her footsteps. And her father's. I see. Sid, do you know why Mid has been spending so much time at the hideaway of late? She told me it was because her studies had been interrupted by events in Canva. Is that not true? No, it isn't. The university offered her a commission. In exchange for full tuition, room and board, they asked her to oversee the design of several new war engines. To anyone else it would be an opportunity, but to Mid, who lost both her parents to war, it was a bitter pill, one she was none too keen to swallow. But that should come as no surprise. She's only ever cared about bringing people hope. The very last thing war can be said to do. Which explains her heirs. She's working to give them a better life. And so should I. What's the odd engineering lesson? Ah, oh, you've given them far more than that. And I'm sure they're very grateful. Mid is teaching my pupils her secrets. I suppose I should brush up on some of them myself. I was wondering when next you'd visit. I don't.
don't believe you've read this particular chapter before. What subject shall we consider today? It's like a dream, the four of us out walking like we used to. Enjoying this, are you? Gav and the others could be in danger as we speak. You're right. I'm sorry. Yote is a fine scout. If Canva was attacked, she will already have the gun gathering information. Tabor isn't far. We should pick up the pace. Bandits, maybe. But look what they've left us. It shouldn't be too hard to find goods. The gentleman of the town guard. Uh, you wouldn't happen to know if the pieces that were stolen from my store were recovered, would you? They were irreplaceable. Be I know something more. Hey, Clive, listen! I've found someone who says he's heard the rumors about Nan. Have you? Go on. Tell him what you told me. All right. It's like I said. A wizened old crone by the name of Karen's been selling steel to whoever will pay her price, be they knight or knave. Says the more swords and spears she puts in people's hands, the more war they'll wage. And the more war being waged, the more call for swords and spears. And who will they all turn to to keep them in steel? Why, the good Reaper herself. <laughs> and you've seen this Reaper at work? Aye, it just so happens I have. You'll find her right here, plying her trade most days. Here in Delamil. Where exactly? She has a stall here in the market, but if you're not the patient type, you can probably find her at her storehouse on the edge of town. But it'd be a bolder man than me that braved that particular nest of vipers. Feeling bold, traveler? I hope so, for your sake. Now, if that's all, I have places to be. Sorry to have kept you. You don't think Nan's the Reaper, do you? Not unless she's discovered the secret of how to be in two places at once. Eh? What do you mean? Lady Karen hasn't left the hideaway in weeks. So who has been running this store he spoke of? Good question. I'll go and have a look. And I'll visit this storehouse on the edge of town. All right, but be careful, Clive.
You too, Goots. to brave the viper's nest. Just you, is it? <laughs> Thought I might have laid it on a bit thick. It was a fairly unconvincing tale. So, what now? That's up to you. Die a slow death? Or a quick one. Boys, he's all yours. But that sword is mine. Hey, now we can pretend this didn't happen. Done it now. Go on. Tell me what I've done. When the Borgwin finds out you've killed his men, he'll have your head. He only wanted that bull of a manservant, the dim one always clinging to Karen's skirts. You weren't even supposed to be here. Who the hell are you anyway? What were you going to do to him? The Borgwin wanted him to get to Karen. I was only supposed to point the lump in the right direction once he arrived in Dalamil. But then you turned up. Well, go on then. If you're going to end me, end me. You're not worth the effort. Now be gone. Before I change my mind. <laughs> Fucking coward! I need to find Goot. Right now. Get your filthy paws off me, you naughty painted lout! Stop calling me names! And stop spreading them horrible lies about Nan! <laughs> well, that will be easy enough. For they are not lies. Every last word is true. And she must pay for her crimes in blood! 
Lord! Goose, are you all right? He, he, he's gonna kill Nan! He said she had to pay in blood! After what she did, it is only right. She ruined my life and the lives of countless others. That loathsome harpy's very existence is a crime, and I will not allow it to continue. Goots, was it? I have no quarrel with you. Only with your employer. Run along now. You need not pay for her sins. No. No? I don't care what she did. I won't let you hurt Nan. Promise me you won't hurt her. Or I'll... Or I'll... Or I'll kill you myself! Goot. No. Enough, all of you! Karen. But how did you... <laughs> You're a sight less clever than you think you are, the pair of you. Did you think I wouldn't notice the two of you slinking off together? Well, the whole thing got me thinking. Who in Dalamil might bear me a grudge? And a certain snivelling shit I ran afoul of in my fairy years came to mind. Though it was just Bogan back then, won't it? Huh. I thought the years might have taught you some sense. But I see you're the same pants-pissing craving you've always been. What was it we called you? Wet legs. You... you bitch! Everything that happened. It was all your fault. And now you'll finally pay for what you did to me. Goods, you... If you want a piece of Nan, you'll have to go through me. Fuck. You great galoot. Out of the way, I can handle this myself. So, wet legs, you remember what you told me when we last met? An eye for an eye. Wise words, sir. Uh, wise words. And now, it's time to collect. Sorry to keep you waiting. Is he... Dead? No. But I reckon he wishes he was. It's an easy going through life, one eye shot of a pair. After all, I should know. You don't mean... Oh, don't tell me you didn't notice. Lost it to old wet legs back when we were working the same routes. Said I'd stolen from his strong box. I'd done nothing of the sort, mind. But that didn't stop him taking his little revenge. So I took some of my own. Sorry, lost everything. His coin, his clients. Always knew he'd be back one day to claim his due. But he crossed a line dragging poor goots into this. He didn't hurt you, did he? No, Nan. Still got all my arms, see? Legs, too. <laughs> but... What if he comes back again? What if he does? First we take the other eye, then we work our way down. He'll learn his lesson soon enough. But something tells me the wet legs has learned it already. Right. Let's get you back to the hideaway. You've attracted quite enough attention already. Ta-ra, Clive! Remind me never to cross you, Karen.
see that? Tell me you saw that. Clive! Quick look. Think you can help? Nothing like a dish of cold vengeance to foul a gut. Uh, I'm sorry, Nan. I, I didn't mean to make things worse. I just thought I had to protect you. Like you've protected me. Aye. Well, someone had to. Your parents certainly didn't give a whit for your well-being. Reckon the both of us would be worse off if I'd not taken you on. You've always been me right eye, Goots. And I'd have you stay that way. So don't you dare go looking for trouble again. Well, I will. If you ever need help, I'll do it again and again. And you can't stop me. Why, you big lump. Fine. Play the hero if it makes you happy. Thanks, Nan. I won't let you down. There's nothing he wouldn't do for you. That's as may be. But if he's ever to make his own way in life, he'll need to start looking out for himself as well. Till then, he'll need people to watch his back, just like you did in Dallamil. Don't think I didn't appreciate that. Of course. His family. Stop it. You make me one good eye, mister. I don't go thinking that'll do you any favours. A potion today will cost you the same as it did yesterday. Arthur's got a big heart. It's a pity there's so many who are happy to take advantage of it. My lord, Marcus, it is you. Then you received my letter. I am Sebastian Rutherford, chief steward of your lord uncle's estate. Of course. We met once before. Yes, my lord. Thank you for coming. And what was so sensitive that you couldn't put it in writing? A thousand apologies, my lord. I did not mean to offend. I merely... It's all right. Continue. I am here at Martha's Rest, at the behest of your lord uncle, tasked with learning what I am able of the realm's current state of affairs. And what I have learned is grim. 
The fall of the Mother Crystals has left Storm in a state of utter disarray. The subsequent darkening of the heavens has only made things worse. Akashic attacks, once unthinkable, are now commonplace. The gears of governance have ground to a halt, and without a steady hand on the tiller, the realm threatens to drift into utter chaos. Your lord uncle, uh, however, believes there is a way to avoid this fate and is determined to see it set in motion. That sounds like quite the undertaking. It is. Hence my having enlisted the aid of several colleagues serving the seven high houses. Alas. Alas. I have lost contact with two of those colleagues already. They are both able-bodied and trained in the sword, yet in these dark times even that may not prove sufficient to keep a man safe on the road. So you want me to find them? I'll need to know where they went. One I sent to investigate the Republic, the other the old Imperial capital of Oriflam. That doesn't exactly narrow it down. I suppose I'll start in Dalamil and work my way east. Thank you, my lord. I shall pray for your success and safety. <laughs> my associate in Dalmechia would have had to pass through the Republic's checkpoints to gain entry to the capital. Perhaps someone in Dalamil or Tabor would have seen him. There were ghosts. The gates not lazy. You needn't fret. The creatures are coming. Then. That's what we're getting. Run like the wind. This might take a while. Apocrates said I should be able to find what I'm looking for somewhere nearby. Nine blue dragons and bright yellow flowers. Should be easy enough to spot. You deserve a rest. This must be our wyvern. All right. Let's get this over with. the wyvern's liver. 
Now I just need to find the herbs. Bright yellow with a heady scent. I think that's everything Molly needs to resurrect her recipe. Better back. Seems the hideaway's lost its appetite. So, did you have that word with Tomes then? I did, and he was as helpful as ever. He told me exactly where to look, in fact. And what precisely will I be cooking up? Or is it better not to know? Blueback wyvern liver. And, uh, a herb known as Saint's Bonnet. Ah, wyvern livers, was it? Well, at least it weren't actual worms, I suppose. Now then, you stay right where you are. I've got some cooking to do. Let's hope these grand old chefs of yore knew what they were on about. And here we have it. Fried Mortress of Skyworm. Ivan's offered to make sure it's fit for consumption. Well, I say offered. He as good as begged. And rightly so. Is there any higher honor than partaking in a slice of culinary history? So, not fit for consumption, then. What? What witchery is this? The crackle of the crust gives way to an almost violent richness. Yet, it is the piquant kiss of the saint's bonnet that tames this savage dish. It is a tour de force. A force of nature, even. A maelstrom of flavor and sensation. A graceful beast emerging from centuries of slumber. I think he likes it. Well, I can't quite tell with all that nonsense he's talking. But I reckon you might be right. It was decent then, I take it. Decent? It's remarkable. And I defy any man to say a word to the contrary. Sid, might I suggest that you command a party of your finest men and women? to procure a dozen blueback wyverns forthwith. I'll give it some thought. Welcome back, Sid. Oh, you're not leaving already, are you? Let me tell you a story, Clive. All right. Them rumours wet legs were spreading. Might be they weren't just tales plucked out of thin air. You see, there were a time when I weren't too particular about who I sold steel to, so long as they paid me the right price. Some women lust after blood, others after flesh, but me? I were always one for gold. And to satisfy that lust, I sold to opposing armies, stabbed my every client in the back, made myself the most hated woman in the twins. But then one day... One day I met a man who made me a different kind of offer. 
said it'd give me access to a realm-wide community of like-minded individuals in constant need of steel and sundries. On the condition I sold to him and his alone. Was that the first time you met Sid? Aye. And I fell right into his damn trap. He were true to his word, so I ended up being true to mine. And I soon started making the best profits I've seen since taking up the trade. And all without aiding or abetting any outlaws. Except Sid himself, that is. Told me about his plan to topple the Mother Crystals, you know. Said that with them gone, the realm would want for all manner of things. An opportunity for the likes of me to mint Gil. Why, I reckon an enterprising individual could find herself the richest damn in the twins. And that's when he had me. I emptied my stores that day and moved into the Hideaway proper. And the rest, as they say, is ancient bloody history. A dozen years on, and I'm still not the richest damn. <laughs> not for lack of trying, mind. But I can say that I have never been happier. You've all shown me there are some things more precious than Gil. That there are. So don't you go messing it all up. Or you'll have me to answer to. Aye, it's a dangerous world out there. That grey lump. No. Coin purse weighing you down. Finished, are you? See the pair that got pulled into time. It's not going to be easy finding one man in an entire Republic. Have someone here seen something? Mummy? The gentleman of the town guard. in trouble. I don't see your master here. So you can start by giving us all the coppers in your purse. I already told you, I have nothing. <laughs> then maybe we'll take that pretty outfit and the steel you're wearing. Uh, uh, please! These men are trying to rob me! I'll deal with this. Thank you. You that one's master, then? <laughs> if you kindly pay the coin he owes us, we can pretend you didn't draw your blade on Republican soldiers. Or you can go back to your garrison and I won't report you to your captain. Oh, you're more than welcome to. He hasn't had many visitors since we slit his throat.
I'd expect as much from Hugo's faithful, but these were men of the fist. Much has changed in the Republican army since they lost their rock. You've seen this kind of thing before then? Many times. I was sent here to observe the situation. You're one of Rutherford's men. He sent me to look for you. Well, then you have my thanks. I fancy I could defend myself against one, perhaps two, but a whole regiment. I, I arrived in Dalamil several days ago, but when I called upon the captain of the local garrison to make inquiries, his men confiscated my effects and locked me in a cell. The captain is no more. And his men make the rules now. Fortunately, I was able to bribe my way free. Only to be stopped again by those soldiers you so kindly dispatched. What of the Fist Central Command? Surely they wouldn't allow such lawlessness amongst their ranks. I would imagine they are unaware of it. Most of the army has fallen back to the capital and hunkered down behind her walls. Those who weren't recalled now rule the fringes unchecked, answering to no one but themselves. Then it's worse than we imagined. You should return to Rosaria. It's not safe here. I'll find a caravan heading north. You won't mind if I borrow one of these soldiers' coin purses? Not at all. Now, to find this second associate of Rutherford's. If he was bound for Oriflam, I'll start at Northreach and see if I can pick up his trail. There's a lot of road between here and the capital. Rutherford's man could be anywhere. What happened here? If you're with the others, they've already relieved me of my belongings. I'm not. I'm looking for someone who was sent here by a man named Rutherford. And then you found him. I am Alastair Rockford, attendant to the Lady Ariane of House Wellesley. Of the seven high houses of Rosaria. It's been a long time since last I saw my great aunt. Is she well? My Lord Marquis? Uh, yes. Yes, she is. The Lady Dowager has granted me leave to assist your Uncle Stuart. I was on my way back from the old capital when I saw some villagers being robbed on the road here. Bandits. They looked more like field hands, but it didn't matter in the end. I did what I could to help the victims, but all it earned me was a pommel to the temple. Which way did they go? South, toward the gate. All right. I'll take care of them. Founder knows I've met enough of their kind. You head back to Northreach. Visit the Vale. Tell them I sent you. Thank you. I shall. Founder be your shield. It was only a short while ago that I was assaulted. If you hurry south, you may find those who did... They just couldn't resist, could they? One's ours, pretty boy.
Make for the town while you can. There may be more bandits nearby. You don't need to tell me twice. Many thanks, traveler. This looks to be all of them. I thought I told you to make for the Vale. And stand by as ill might befall the heir to the Ducal Throne. It's just Clive, and I'm fine. Which is more than can be said for you. I will survive. Strange that the garrison wouldn't intervene in such a brazen attack so close to their gates. The garrison have their hands full inside the city. Some days they don't even send out patrols. There are few hands left to work the fields, and even fewer to transport the grain. The market stalls are nearly bare, and the price for what remains is exorbitant. It's not uncommon to see a fight break out over a crust of bread. When I said the ones who attacked me didn't have the look of bandits, I meant it. They were probably just desperate. Rockford, listen to me. If you are to continue your investigation, you first need to seek the attention of a healer. I... Of course. I shall return to Northreach right away. But allow me to thank you first. Had you not happened along, I... Don't thank me. Thank Rutherford. It was he who sent me. I suppose he'll be wondering where I've got to. I shall send a Bastolus as soon as I'm able. Good day. My uncle certainly has his work cut out for him. If it isn't already too late. I should go and tell Rutherford that his colleagues are still in one. Peace. see you're still here. The rest's location affords a constant flow of traders, and with it a constant flow of information. Speaking of which, I received word from both my associates. They have resumed their investigations, thanks to you. I only happen to be in the right place at the right time. They both seem to think the realm's prospects rather grim. I am afraid that grim would be putting it lightly. Storm is in crisis, and if we are to free her, we must work quickly. And we must work together. Such is your Lord Uncle's wish. As it is mine. I will see that your Lord Uncle is made aware of the situation in both Dalmechia and Sandbreck. Ah. And inform him of your timely assistance, of course. I was wondering when next you'd visit. I have a few new notes that might interest you. You wish to study the tomes?
Did you learn everything you need? Let's go. Run like the wind. We can use the ruins to cross the ravine. Assuming they would allow it, the Echoes have a will of their own. Time to fight. Waken wins! You're finished!
Tell us about Yote, Joshua. She's strong-willed, loyal, and deadly with a blade. Much like Clive, but with better manners. to now then bound for the free cities perhaps oh no need to say if you'd rather not we all have our reasons ain't exactly feeling like sharing with strangers myself at the mo truth be told we could do with a bit of inspiration don't know which way to turn no more was doing a roaring trade back in oriflam boy right up until the poor drake lost her noggin so thought it'd try me luck in the desert and the fang went the same way. And don't get me started on the mess in the blooming Dominion. Suppose I could try Camber next. But knowing my luck, the old place be crawling with the works before I'd even set out me stall. But as I always say, where there's crisis, there's opportunity. The opportunity to mint gill, that is. So, where to next? Is there any money to be made in Ash? Dorks even carry Gil. I do. Where are you off to now then? What happened here? Where are your comrades? Ether flood up ahead. It swallowed our camp. 
while we slept. My old men did this. Turned. Every last one of them. There's a village not far from here. Tabor. The people were kind to us. It's only a matter of time before they won't stand the chance. We can't let those monsters reach the... Hoko, you catch your breath. Thank you. Our encampment is up ahead. Just off the track. <laughs> they must not reach Tabor. Forgive me, Lord Kuka. Rest well, soldier. He said the encampment was close. Let's hope the Akashic are still there. Another ether flood. They're everywhere now. We can't go around it. Then we'll just have to be careful. Someone there! Please, I... I can't move my leg! That doesn't sound like an Akashic. Italian. I am. I heard the fighting. Are the others taken care of? One of your brothers in arms told me what happened and asked for help. Another survivor? Where is he? <laughs> tell me. His wounds were too deep. <sighs> he was right to send you. Those things you slew are no longer my brothers. Tabor is safe thanks to you. Here, you've earned it. He 
You seem familiar. Have we met? You must have me confused with someone else. Son of a whore! You're Sid! I was there! In Kostnis when you killed my brothers! I was there in Rosalith when you killed my commander! My war with Hugo Kupka is over. I bear no ill will toward those who followed him. And what of my ill will? Coward! Draw your steel. Lord Kupka shall be avenged! When your wounds have healed and your head has cooled, come and find me if you must. Though I hazard your life would be better spent in service of those who need it. Or have you forgotten your oath to the Republic? My oath? What would you know of oaths? I know how hard they are to keep. Which is why I'm giving you the chance to keep yours. No. <laughs> I won't be deceived. Lord Kupka told us of your crimes, you are an outlaw, a murderer, not some, <laughs> some man like you or anyone else. I am nothing like you. But if you're not going to kill me, then go. Leave. Just know that I will find you, Sid. Someday. You will regret not killing me when you had a chance, Sid. Good girl. Run like the wind. Kill! Now, Torgal! All yours, 
We're nearly there. Have you been to Tabor before? There are a few places I haven't. Welcome, travelers. We don't get many visitors here in Tabor. Where now, Joshua? There is a residence just inside the city gate. She awaits us within. Careful how you pack that leather. Any creases or scratches will bring down the price. How are those new boots treating you? you're after thanks you can go inside if you want but stay quiet these aren't ready for sale if that's what you're thinking and I'll thank you to keep your hands to yourself these quarry's been hard to find since the sky's turned These stones to Canva, and the rest of the boxes to Dalaman. This isn't at all foreboding. Welcome, welcome. Anything else? Of course. Come again. My Lord Marquess.
It is an honor. I am Yote, Knight of the Undying, charged with the protection of His Grace, Joshua Rosfield. Keeper of the Flame of the Phoenix. Would you care to elaborate? The Undying are loyal servants to the Ducal Throne. Or more specifically, to its heir. They have served our family for generations, albeit from the shadows. Since their inception, they have been tasked with the preservation and enactment of the rites of ancestral communion. After the events at Phoenix Gate, it was the Undying who delivered me to safety. And since the day I left Rosaria, Yote has been my constant companion and protector. Without her sword, I would not have survived my journey across the realm. Rise, Lady Yote. You saved my brother. I owe you a debt I can never repay. I but did my duty. Come now. Tell us what you've discovered. Your Grace. It is as you feared. The vessel we spied off the coast of the Crystalline Dominion on the night of her fall. It was the Ein Herjar. Beyond any doubt. The Black Galleon. Joshua. The Ein Herjar is the Royalist flagship. What business would they have in the Dominion? Uh, upon learning of Walud's involvement in recent events at Drake's Fang, I sensed the malign influence of Ultima, and bid Yote and the Undying look into the matter. We have reason to believe that the Black Galleon weighed anchor shortly after the fighting began, and set a course due south. For Canva? Then it is Waluda knights who besiege the cities. What is left of them, yes. And the Black Galleon sails up at one man's behest. Barnabas Tharm. But are we truly safe here in the Agora? City Guard have been paid, if that's what you're implying. All the more reason for them to run. Well, you are free to leave, Lord Minister. Markets abandoned, warehouses aflame, blackened hulls choking every port in the capital. Canva is ruined. The realm teeters on the brink of chaos, and all you can think about is commerce. Forgive us. We were not aware Dalmechia now subsisted on charity. Not quite. How dare you! Distinguished members of the Council, you must forgive His Majesty this intrusion. What did you... What is the meaning of this? A trifle crowded, but I fear it will have to serve, my liege. Very well. My colleagues, do you not see? The king, he has come to save us from the Akashi. He is a gift from the heavens, divine intervention, our very salvation. And of course, if it is compensation he requires, we would be most willing to negotiate a fair price for services rendered. Fools. Your ignorance unbecomes you. Your Majesty, correct me if I'm wrong, 
that I would swear that the fiends washing the cobbles of Canva with the blood of her citizens wear the colors of Walud. <laughs> ha! So you do not deny it. Guards, fetter them and see our guests to the dungeons! <laughs> Enough. creatures. That you should imagine yourselves worthy of salvation. The girl is still here, somewhere in the city. Her consciousness fair dripping with her late father's hubris. A consciousness to which Mythos is inextricably bound. And inexorably drawn. See that he is made welcome. Yes, your majesty. Come, Mythos. Surely the prince's light cannot have sated you. So then, how long has Walud been under Ultima's control? How long indeed? Based on what we know of Barnabas' actions, I would guess some few years, mayhap more. But to what end? What does Ultima want? The tapestry. Show them. Gate, Drake's breath, and now here. But what is it? It is old, ancient, even. Nought remains of the faith it represents, save what can be gleaned from the image itself. None could tell me what the one in the apodotry meant, even the undying. But I believe it may be the key to discerning Ultima's purpose. That figure in the center. The one beneath whom the icons congregate, that I believe to be Ultima. He is a god, or at least godlike. His very existence beyond our ken. The icons, and by extension their dominance, are meant to be his subjects. And while some, like Barnabas, have accepted this role, others have rejected it. Like you, Clive. Which is rather inconvenient, as it appears he needs you most of all. And gods don't like to be disobeyed. No, I don't suppose they do. Clive, may I tell Yote of the lake? By all means. Yote, I will be accompanying my brother to the free cities. Whilst we are afield, I would have you watch over those Clive has made his wards. Omielos Delan to his sag Ilith. Though well concealed, the hideaway lacks trained fighters to defend its occupants should they be discovered. But it is my duty to... As it has ever been my brother's duty, remember. If... if that is your wish, your grace. But please be safe. If aught were to befall you, 
I... You have my word. Farewell, my lord, my lady. We are in your debt, Yote. Let's find our friends. for you very deeply and I her which is why I had to let her go 